Why does water drive preparedness? Being prepared versus being prepared is often constrained by the availability of water. Would you survive sheltering in place for one week? How about one month? Outlined are action steps and strategies. Water, H2O, liquid sunshine, we drink, hydrate, pour, wash, cleanse, sprinkle, moisten, dampen, spray, splash, soak, douse, drench, saturate, diluce, diluce, dilute, and sometimes even flood with water. Despite all that, we take this precious resource for granted. This series is about starting preparations from where you are at. So don't be discouraged if where you're at is near ground zero. Just don't stay there. It's time to dive in. A very quick prayer first. Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, please be with us in our physical preparations and keep us from the sin of presumption. We pray this in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. In a way, water powers your prepping journey. It's the wheel, so to speak, that drives many decisions and can determine the nature and extent of your preparations. Why is water preparation so important? In our uncertain times, it's not prudent or safe to wholly depend on municipal power, water, or sewer. Municipal water flows only when electricity flows and both can be cut off by internet hacking, sabotage, riots, fire, floods, storms, solar flares, government instability, and or economic crisis. Getting back online could take weeks or even months, especially if coupled with societal unrest or collapse. Even if you have a well and a well pump, when the grid stops, it will too. Grid-tied solar gets you no further, because they are inoperative when the grid is down. Thankfully, multi-mode inverters with battery backups are becoming increasingly popular, and will be fodder for a later discussion. But there will be those that will say, Oh, it's very unlikely for the power grid, city water, and the sewer to go down. Yet, that is exactly what a disaster is. It's an unlikely event. And unfortunately today, those unlikely events are becoming almost commonplace. Do you only insure your car uh, against collisions with 1957 Ford Edsels? Being wise means insuring yourself against a wide range of situations. You likely shell out huge amounts of quan, dollarini, shekels for that protective shield. Is it unreasonable to have insurance on a resource that you may only live three days without? In prepping for disasters, plan for the worst, but pray for the best. We all need to get more prepared. Four levels of preparations are outlined here based on how long you could survive without relying on public utilities, grocery stores, or any outside assistance. Weak. A practical first goal is to have preparations that would sustain you for a week. Could you survive a week where you are without power or water or going to a grocery store? This will cover an action scenario that minimizes your water needs. Month-long scenario. What is needed to stretch that period out to a month without outside resources? And note that it takes well over four times the amount of water. Year scenario, whoo! Now this is a serious period of time, requiring a great deal more planning. Water demands become rigorous, and simply storing that much water, well, it starts hitting practical limits. Self-sustaining. Now the self-sustaining, that, that's like the holy grail of preparation. They, it's a full, long-term, self-sustaining lifestyle. 
learning about longer term scenarios can actually help you even as a newbie, newbie because, because you come to understand how the short term preps can fit into a longer term strategy. Let's get started on this ostensibly week-long scenario. If you're further along this prepping water wheel, well, <laughs> wipe that smug look off your face because this is also a backward compatibility goal too. More plainly said, even exotic preps can fail at any time and you may need to fall back on earlier preps as you struggle to get things going again. I say that in part because well, this recently played out here on our homestead. And before speaking specifically about water, there are other items that tie in here. Week-long scenario. The truth is, one never knows how long a disaster will span. This is the emergency broadcasting network. All normal forms of communications appear to have broken down. Although there has been no official statement, the light flashes and the resulting cloud formations would indicate that Los Angeles and surrounding areas have been attacked by nuclear bombs or missiles. I repeat, this is not an official statement. You won't know that things will be uh, resolved in a week or, frankly, even a month. So, of course, a must-have for any of these scenarios are radios that allow you to get local information on the situation. Okay. Here's the scene. You've put together one week of all the supplies needed. A disaster hits. And since you measured well, each day you're eating and drinking up one day of that seven day supply cache. You've been well fed and watered. And on the eighth day, you head out expectantly to the store. Oops, there's nothing there. Well, then what? If you'd known this earlier, you could have rationed everything and been more creative in foraging or other forms of self-sufficiency to stretch those supplies out. Conversely, if it appeared that the problem would last less than a week, then you could have provided more aid to your neighbors. This is why it's, it's important to have good comms, communications. It's critical. You can't make good plans without good information. And along those lines, be aware that to prevent panic, governments often play down the severity of a situation. So be certain to get information from different sources and use discernment. The wise among you already know this, but in our age, the mainstream press, well, they're sort of just a bunch of stooges for the one world government rhetoric and coercion that's going on out there. So you need a radio or two that does not rely on grid power and having its channels preset to emergency stations, local news, broadcast stations, weather, and the like. Even a cheap battery powered AM FM radio can somewhat suffice, or better, a shortwave radio which can also listen to HF bands including the amateur radio bands. And personal communications can be important, like so-called walkie-talkies. For example, we have some Baofeng radios, which provide walkie-talkie capability. The ability to listen to broadcast bands as well, weather stations, and so forth, even to get onto repeaters. I'm a ham radio operator. I can access different repeaters with it if they're functioning at that time. More quick notes before going forward. Medical. Be certain you have sufficient medications that you require and have a good first aid trauma kit, as well as normal first aid supplies such as band-aids, disinfectants, and so forth. Because depending upon the disaster, medical help may not be available. Heat. And we're about to speak about water needs, not ice needs. Okay? Oh, boy. So if you live in a frigidly cold region and your electricity, water, and even natural gas stop working during the winter, then the water and you 
will both freeze unless you have a heat source with sufficient stored fuel, whether it's wood, fuel pellets, or propane. That's a subject for another day. Okay, week-long scenario. Water. Primary water needs are typically for drinking, for cooking, and for hygiene. In the short-term scenario, how much water do we actually need? So let's look at a strategy that requires the lowest quantity of water per person and provides more flexibility as you advance into later scenarios. There's a great deal to discuss on this strategy. Next session, we jump right into the water on this week-long scenario with a practical strategy to simplify this crucial first step. The best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. That's a quote by H. Jackson Brown, Jr. R.H. here, signing off. Hasta la projecto.